Good morning, October the 27th, this is CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. Today is day number 19 into week number 10. So let's get started. Good morning, welcome back to this class. Today is day number 19 in week number 10. I have about 10 minutes time to share with you and I would like to cut it short. Uh, today, before I invite you to sign up for today's team-based meeting, which I've already sent a um, public discussion forum message here. So those people who would like to earn some score today, you will be given priority to share at the end of the, today's class. Okay? It's very important that uh, in date number 19, towards the beginning of this week, I need to tell you that after this week, you should have finished 10 weeks of the semester. And based on the syllabus, it is expected that you should individually have completed one journal per topic in each of the past 10 weeks. Now, this is very important for you to earn another score in the semester. In the semester, there is a score called Learn to Learn score, which will give you 15% out of the 100% semester score. Now, in order to earn that 15% learn-to-learn -learn score, you need to say, finish at least one journal per week in the first 10 weeks of the semester. Now, in each of these journals, you just need to select one topic out of the past 10 weeks. So if you look at the course review side, which I saw you last week, you could actually see quite a number of questions there. And in each week, if you select one question and complete the journal with your OIA, you should receive 10 points out of the 15 points. Now, what about the other five points? The other five points is you select five out of this 10 OIA set that you finish in the very beginning, up to the first 10 weeks, and you write your personal block on five of the 10 journals. With that, you will receive another five points. So, this kind of learn-to-learn -learn score is meant to maintain your momentum to go on your individual learning based on a topic of interest in each week of the semester. Particularly, this is the 10th week. The design of this course is in each of the first 10 week, you should have a first topic. So, um, may I just remind you, besides working on your learning contract number three, do not forget this learn to learn score, which is very important for you, okay? Now, if you have done your in-class participations, you should have 20% of the 100% score. If you have done the learn to learn score, you should have 15%. That is already 35% of the 100% semester score. Do not look down on this, okay? You can definitely get that, and it's very important. So if you have not done this in the past 10 weeks, we still have five weeks to go towards the end of the semester. You better go back and do it, all right? Now, principally speaking, if you have finished the free learning contract, most students have finished six topics, each topic per week, and you have four more topics to go. For those hardworking students, I can see that most of you in the category of hardworking students should have done nine topics and after this week should have done ten topics. So do you understand how you can manage your score, all right? So together with the three learning contracts with the 30%, you know that it's already 65%. And then after the midterm, it's 80%. And so remaining 20% is on the learning portfolio. So after the end of the semester, since we do not have any final exam, so you should know how many score you have earned. Now, I should be able to finish grading your learning contract number two by the end of this week, okay? And then I start grading your learning contract number three uh, beginning next week. <coughs> Given the fact that you already submit to work, if not, after November the 8th. So just keep that in mind, all right? So the teacher's message of this week is a very brief message, but it's brief in a sense, I just want you to go back to the teamwork, make sure that you do things on the team wiki, um, as well as working together. So a couple of points of reminder on the teamwork. 
this should have some rows in your team, a schedule to meet, a schedule to revise your work, a schedule to review your work, okay? And then some of the work of how you can help out one another with the uh, manpower you have, okay? So if you succeed, that means the team succeeds. If you fail, the team is going to fail. So work together as a team. And I would like also to give you this reminder of this couple of questions which I've already given you in your blog in the first learning contract. So make sure when you share your topics, ask yourself how many of these questions you and the members of your team will actually answer. And then the link for the first learning contract will be up on November the 1st and we'll be collecting the work until November the 8th, okay? So starting from this Saturday up to next Saturday. Okay, that is the teacher's message for today. So having said that, let's go back to week number 10. Now, relatively recently, you have heard the anonymous group. There's a group of hackers which have declared war to the Hong Kong government and also to the government in, inside mainland China because they like to help those who would like to ask for more democracy. And today I'm going to give you a little bit on the background of this group, okay? So I'm going to take up a small amount of your time before I return the time to you. Now remember, if your group or your team would like to share, make sure you respond here by signing up for your team. We would like to save some time not to do the, the lucky draw if it is not necessary. Okay, by signing up here, first come, first serve, and you will earn your sharing slot today in class. So, without much ado, let's go for this. We would not be able to see all of this, but let's go for part of this. So uh, this event is uh, co-sponsored with our Center for Internet and Society. Let me give you this uh, one, which is much more. Uh, the computer hacker group Anonymous is claiming tonight that it took down the website of the Federal Appeals Court in San Francisco this afternoon. They took down Senate.gov servers, they've taken down HP Gary, Sony's claiming they did $150 million worth of damage. So many confidential files that tonight, because of these hackers, can be in the hands of anyone. Visa, MasterCard, the PayPal situation. The criminals who hacked into Sarah Palin's private email. The Church of Scientology says Anonymous is a sign of terrorist group of religious bigots. Anonymous and this other group called a Walls Sec. They seem to be wanting to prove a point. Anonymous kind of was like the big, strong, buff kid who had low self-esteem. And then all of a sudden, punched somebody in the face and was like, holy shit, I'm really strong. And Anonymous calls itself the final boss of the internet. And sometimes it proves to be really fucking true. You are going to violate the freedoms of the internet, you certainly better watch the fuck out. They are kind of the rude boys of activism. There's a real rough edge to them, which I think also is one reason why they garner so much love and hate from people too. They represent a certain sort of chaotic freedom. Individual, young, nameless, faceless folks are having geopolitical impact. I mean, it's, it's, it's both exhilarating to realize that and terrifying to realize that. It kind of depends on how that power is wielded.
stand for freedom of speech, the power of the people, the ability for them to protest against the government, to right wrongs, no censorship, especially online, but also in real life. We have members throughout society and all strata's of it worldwide. Yeah, we have no leadership. It's a one voice. It's, it's not individual voices. That's why we don't show our faces. That's why we don't give our names. We're speaking as one, and it's a collective. Good time. I would love to live in a country where the government fears its citizens and not, and, and not the other way around. But right now, plenty of anonymous actors are in hiding because of fear of reprisals by the government. I think all of anything, there's unpatriotic. That we're just a bunch of children sitting in some of our parents' basement. I got called a terrorist sympathizer. We've been called kids, we've been called cyber bullies, we've been called hooligans, and... You know, sometimes those words aren't entirely unfair, but this is a serious political movement. No one, you know, in the general public really seems to get it. What they don't seem to get is that the ability for Anonymous to be everything and anything is, is, is its power. Anonymous is a series of relationships. Hundreds and hundreds of people uh, who are very active in it and who have varying skill sets and who have varying issues they want to advance and uh, who are collaborating in different ways each day. They're a little bit like a prism or a kaleidoscope. They've got many different facets and many different sides. Of course, when you spend enough time with them, you start to get a sort of feel or texture um, that's not just random, right? Yet it's very multifaceted, very rich, does, which does span from the quite lighthearted to the very, very serious. Bob Dylan had a line in the song to say, to live outside the law, you must be honest. They might do something which is technically correct, maybe it's not legally correct, but they're doing it for purposes that in their minds at least are ethical. People who know what they're doing, who share an ethos, who have a commitment to exposing and humiliating the man, who have a very low tolerance of uh, lies and uh, what they perceive as uh, evil on the part of overweening power structures. They share information, they share tools and techniques, and they uh, are currently having a very good time. The hacker culture, as we know it, uh, really sprang from one place. It, it was MIT, and it was uh, uh, specifically the people in the uh, Model Railroad Club, the Tech Model Railroad Club. Hacking originated as humorous pranks. When the guys at MIT put a Volkswagen up on top of the dome of the building, uh, and people woke up and saw the car up there in the morning, uh, or they uh, measured a bridge by the body lengths of somebody, I would say his name was Brian, discovered the bridge over the Charles River was, you know, 822 Bryans. Uh, these are funny things. That's where hacking originated and migrated into engineering and uh, computer communities. Uh, it's funny, it's pranks. I'm Chris weiss Sobel, former member of The Loft. We don't necessarily say hacking group because it makes it sound like we're hacking, so we used to call it the hacker's think tank. Hacktivism was a term coined by a group called the Cult of the Dead Cow. The Cult of the Dead Cow was really kind of um, a, sort of like a propaganda type of organization. They had a guy who was the minister of propaganda. They're kind of merry pranksters. Like everything they did was completely over the top. One of the guys there coined the term hacktivism because he saw what his one of the things his group was doing, which he called hacktivism, was writing software that people in other countries could use to communicate securely, even if their government was spying on them. So the principle was really, it was freedom of expression. It was everyone should have access to the internet, everyone should be able to communicate and get their message out on the internet. Even more important in countries where there was repressive regimes, that if you said something against the regime, they would come and take you away, and you weren't saying it anymore. Just like in, you know, in, act, in traditional activism, it spans the full gamut from sit-ins or, 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 or pickets to actually spiking trees and pouring sand in you know, the engines of construction vehicles. I mean, there's real sabotage. The same thing does all fall under the, the hacktivism label. There is a spectrum. There's sometimes a strong anarchist uh, flavor to it as well. Uh, it's resistance to authority and those who would impose groupthink and group behavior uh, on people, which 
uh, was rightly perceived to be a, a consequence of the digital revolution, as it was used by people in power to do hacking on behalf of righteousness and to redress the grievances of the world. Lance lowered Don Quixote on his horse, uh, nag though she was, uh, flying at, at the windmills of, of uh, modern life. Anonymous grew out of what's known as 4chan. And essentially this is just a, a website where people can upload images uh, and you don't actually give your name, it's just sort of anonymous. When you look at 4chan, you're often surprised because it looks like a site from like 1995 or something. Um, the idea is very simply, you post a comment and you post a picture. Um, and you can post under your name or anonymously. And it's separated into boards about particular topics. So there's a topic on anime, there's a topic on uh, weaponry. There's like a 4chan board for origami, and you just upload interesting pictures of origami. And then there was a, a group called the B, the B board, which essentially was for like anything goes. The first time anybody goes on B, it's kind of an instant revulsion. Because uh, there's never a time that you go on there where you don't see something horrible. That instantly puts off a lot of people. The idea is, post something that can never be unseen. Half of the posts on B are there specifically to make people not want to come back to B. It's what you get when people are allowed to express themselves with apps to be no on for. It's the kind of sum of human imagination and people can get together and think together about any limits of parameters. It's the most vile, disgusting, and funny thing uh, on the internet. One of the important things about 4chan is to have a thread that really explodes and lasts for a long time. If it doesn't, then it disappears. It's a site that's not archived. So it creates conditions for anything that grabs attention at some level. And so humor and grotesqueness as a result are quite good for that. I'd rather just be referred to as anonymous, I guess, in any interviews, because I have some docs out on me. Which is just where I went to. I grew up on it, and I, I lived there. That's just what I did. But it takes a thick skin to enjoy it. But, you know, as long as you're not offended, you'll occasionally come to something really cool or really creative on 4 I think the most interesting thing about it is how you can watch memes evolve. You'll see something posted one day, and then a week later it's got 50,000 Americans on it. A meme is basically just an idea. It's kind of like a gene, but in the realm of the idea. A lot of the, the great internet memes that, that we all know and love, you know, uh, lol cats, right? You know, little cats doing funny things, and then they have, you know, uh, bacon has cheeseburger, right? All that stuff s seems to start in this like petri dish that is 4chan keyboard. Name uh, any meme from the last about six years, and I'll bet you either in its first posting ever was on 4chan or at least one of its earliest revisions that became what it was, was on 4chan. I can see the food situation is so we'll be on our way. It's basically the best breeding ground for uh, internet culture, and as far as I'm concerned. Your 4chan is also very known for acts of trolling. Trolling is a fucking art. Trolling is getting a, the person you're talking to to get as pissed off as they possibly can, and for no reason except for your own enjoyment. Maybe you're trying to illustrate a point, but it's mostly for your own enjoyment. For them, it's, it's funny that like people think the internet is serious business, and if people think the internet is serious business, it's a troll's job to make their life terrible. The idea of anonymous came initially as a joke. I mean, uh, somebody suggested that. What if the whole site, what if 4chan, what if B was just one person? And what if that's just one guy called Anonymous sitting somewhere and you're just reading all these posts by one guy? And it kind of looks like that from the outsider's perspective. I mean, there's no way to tell the difference. It might as well be one guy. 
Fox News did very famous segments about it. They call themselves anonymous. They are hackers on steroids, treating the web like a real-life video game, sacking websites, invading MySpace accounts, disrupting innocent people's lives. And if you fight back, watch out. Destroy. Die. Attack. Reps from a gang of computer hackers calling themselves anonymous. I've had seven different passwords and I've got them all so far. Anonymous hacked his site and plastered it with gay sex pictures. His girlfriend left him. She thought that when I was cheating on her with guys. As long as I can think back, Anonymous has done some pretty off-color things in the name of getting cheap laughs, you know. But, I mean, that's part of the culture. Lulz is a corruption of L-O-L, which stands for Laugh Out Loud. Anonymous gets big lulz from pulling random pranks. For example, messing with online children's games like Habbo Hotel. Habbo Hotel was this online community where you had an avatar and you walked around and talked to other people. It was kind of like an early uh, version of, you know, World of Warcraft or Second Life or any of those virtual worlds. What the, the people on B did was invade Habbo Hotel, created, you know, thousands of avatars. They, they all had this one uniform of a black guy with a big afro wearing a black suit. And so they, there would be thousands of these people, black guys, black suit, you know, huge afro, walk around this world and they would do things like form a swastika out of themselves. And I think that was a real landmark because it, it was when they were able to see that, you know, they can use their numbers to do something really interesting and really disruptive. So we blocking the entrance to their pool and that just pissed them off so fucking much. It was fucking beautiful. That was fucking just wonderful, wonderful times. Those kids love that pool. They love the shit out of their pool. The goal was actually to offend everyone, it, simply because the idea that we could offend you by drawing a little shape on the screen was was stupid to the people involved in it. They were like, really? You're going to get that mad over us doing, just drawing this on the screen? Wow, well, you, you need to refocus a little on life, because this should not be upsetting you that much. All these different organizations online, whether it's 4chan, or just any, any website, there's typically a community uh, aspect to it. This is where people have their social uh, relationships, this is where their friends are, this is where they have a creative outlet. And so all those aspects are going into groups like Anonymous, where people feel like they're part of a bigger thing and they're able to express themselves within that group. There were certain, uh, certain words, certain phrases, uh, certain ways people respond to things, certain images that are posted that created a pattern, and that pattern was, I guess, the origin of what is now anonymous. It's like three masons of the sense of humor, and so much they have this common symbology again, and one of their chief joys, which is kind of wrapped up in power and secrecy, was the fact that they could recognize each other by referencing these symbols, referencing these phrases. Over 9,000... It's over 9,000! I lost my iPod. Mudkips, anything involving mudkips. So you have this weird sort of international culture developing with people you know, across the world, wherever they may be. In late 06 and you know into early 07, there's a bit of a sea change where instead of just posting a bunch of content or randomly saying we're going to go over to some website and post a bunch of dirty comments against someone, uh, it becomes a little more organized. Welcome to the Hal Turner Show! They went after a guy named Hal Turner. They be discriminated against because of white. Hal Turner was a, was a neo-Nazi who was, you know, big online and had a big like podcast. I think that the 14th Amendment was not ratified properly, and I think therefore it is still okay to have Negroes as slaves in America. The first time I heard about Hal Turner is he was knocking somebody on Fortune. There's a million neo-Nazis out there. But he started picking on our dudes, so we had to go to our dude's fucking defense, and it just so happened that he was a neo-Nazi, so that's a big reason that he's a fucking dick face. Why are you, what are you calling from? All right, it is Pedro. Spit, go call. Diego. He was just a horribly racist radio personality who seemed to handle it well when you called in. Like, he could handle being berated by Anonymous. And that made it very interesting. It made it a bit of a challenge. 
It wasn't some guy who just either crumbled or stopped answering the phone. It was a guy who would yell back. Alex Turner wasn't the first like actual person that you know known to cause trouble for, but the circumstances ended up being significant. They DDoS his his website, stuff like that, cost him thousands of dollars, bandwidth fees. The denial of service has been around for a long, long time. So the equivalent of like if you you know for some reason wanted to disrupt a, a bus service, right? You can hire a thousand extras to all go and like line up at the bus station, right, and get on the bus, and so that anyone who was really trying to get on the bus couldn't do it, right? It's as simple as that. When you stop trying to visit, website goes back up, no permanent damage. We did Austin, and then we kind of trolled him in real life. We sent countless pizzas to his house, we signed him up for escorts on Craigslist, we sent a bunch of pallets of uh, you know, industrial materials to his house, which he ultimately had to put the bill for. And basically we destroyed his ability to pay for his radio show, and that took him off the internet. And then they ended up getting some some real hackers to, to help them out. Like this wasn't sort of pranks. They actually like were able to get into Hal Turner's private servers uh, and his mail servers and you know, find some interesting emails that he was serving as an FBI informant. Uh, which you know, if you're a, you know a right wing neo Nazi, it's not a good thing to be. And obviously, him being an FBI informant, and also his reaction, his sort of douchebaggy reaction to the raids. Uh, damage his credibility within the white nationalist scene, you know, which is a shame. Hal Turner's gone, he's been prosecuted by the feds for threatening judges. What follows is a period of, of confusion and, and anger in which the you know, original lot of people of the sort who want to keep anonymous in this nihilist little, you know, ridiculous group, you know, are upset that now, you know, that the most terrible thing on the internet is now becoming a force for good all of a sudden. I'm Mike Vitale, and my handle is Seth Dude. Now, this is January 2008. Anonymous is strong now. You know, we're not a little dinky fucking group anymore. Like, this is like millions of people worldwide, and we're watching. And then Scientology stepped in with a big target on his chest. A video came out of Tom Cruise. It was supposed to be like an internal Scientology video, uh, talking about secrets of, of Scientology. And being a Scientologist, when you drive past an accident, it's not like anyone else. As you drive past, you know you have to do something about it because you know you're the only one that can really help. It talks about are you the only one who can stop you know bad things from happening, uh, and so this is kind of widely mocked online. It circulated like wildfire. Instantly, the Scientologists uh, post uh, a DMCA, Digital Millennium Copyright Act. And this is a way that if you own content, you can go to video sites, uh, upload sites, and have your content pulled when someone uploads it illegally. So Scientology is always at odds with the internet, always trying to legally bully people out of fucking them over on the internet. They always did that. Um, and then here they are trying again, but you know what? Now when I saw that, and they said, oh, you guys just fucked around badly. Like, you're trying to censor our internet. You know, like, are you trying to take a joke away from Anonymous? Like, you don't do that. A few anons, a few people on 4chan posted, hey, we should grab that video and post it on a few other sites. What followed was, uh, this is term called the Barbra Streisand effect. And this video, as they were attempting to suppress it, went everywhere. Like, everywhere you look on the internet, you were gonna stumble upon this video. Actually, Gawker, the site that I worked for, was, I think, the first one to put it on the website, and we got in a huge legal battle with Scientology, who wanted us to take it down. Scientology is an interesting target because in some ways it's the perfect inversion of what geeks and hackers value. At so many different levels, science fiction, intellectual property, discourses of freedom, science and technology, it's very proprietary, it's closed, and so in some ways if you had something like a cultural inversion machine and you stuck geeks and hackers in there, you get something that looks a lot like Scientology, so it's quite offensive and there's a real pleasure in attacking your perfect nemesis. And people who knew what Anonymous was to begin with were like, oh my god, Anonymous is going to go to war with Scientology? This should be really interesting. Especially because it's two weird-ass groups. I mean, I, you know, I've been an Anon for a long fucking time. I know Anonymous is really strange. They're re like they're weird, and the stuff we like is weird, and it's really not mainstream at all. Now you have Scientology, 
also really weird. A lot of crazy shit goes down. Anybody on the outside who's seeing this is going, let's watch these two retards fight. Like, a, they're, both their pants are going to fall down, they're going to triple, and it's going to hurt everybody, and it's going to be hysterical. And then that's when 4chan kind of reared into action, really reared into action. And they started to troll the Church of Scientology. And this took the form of pranking the Dianetics hotline, ordering pizzas. I go to call them on the phone and it's busy, busy, busy. You know, and that's their main fucking Dianetics hotline. Their Dianetics 800 number, you can't get through. Because the nons have completely fucking clocked it. And just probably saying stupid shit. The whole idea was just you call them just to keep them on the phone. Listen, L. Ron, how do I Dianetics my face? They were not expecting that. They couldn't handle it. I'm Brian Mettenbrink. I had just gone to the 4chan just on pure happenstance, and I saw a post about a Scientology thing, and I started looking up stuff, and I'm like, oh, this is actually for a decent cause. I think I'll, you know, do this. Anonymous members have, have developed a distributed denial of service attack tool called Low Orbit Ion Cannon, which is the name taken from a computer game. Low Orbit Ion Cannon is what's called an end game weapon in um, Red Alert. All you had to do was literally follow instructions step by step. You do, you put in the site, you see that the IP is correct, you make sure that all these settings are good and you hit the button and off it goes. And what it does is it tells Scientology.org in this case, it tells them to send their website to my computer about, I think, it was 800,000 times in a weekend, and I'm pretty sure I probably took it down myself a couple of times. It felt like you were making a difference, you know, just you yourself, and you didn't even have to leave your home, you know? And one of the guys said, we need to make a video. We just, we have to make a video. Hello, leaders of Scientology. We are anonymous. When the video came out on January 21st, that was one of the first times that anonymous as a um, culture started referring to itself as anonymous as a movement. That video probably changed everything. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. It basically looked like if a computer was going to tell you that he was going to beat the shit out of you, this is what it would look like. That one video really galvanized that moment, that moment of innovation. That that's exactly like with that video, internet activism as it's known today, was born. And you just see this consensus forming that, it, that it's going to happen. So we made the code of conduct. Don't bring weapons. Dress accordingly. Cover your faces, because they will try to find out who you are and screw with your life. Rule number 17, cover your face. This will prevent your identification from videos taken by hostiles. Scientology has a history of harassing, stalking, and just generally doing horrible things to its critics. So people needed a way to hide their identities. A lot of people had very legitimate fears. They don't want to be followed upon. They don't want to be stalked. They don't want to put their families and themselves in danger. Everyone was going, well, we're going to wear a mask. What's the only fucking mask that we all already know or have a joke about? And it's the Guy Fawkes mask. You see the movie for Vendetta? You know, the ending scene where everyone's wearing the Guy Fawkes mask. That is very reminiscent of what Anonymous thinks Anonymous is. We wanted to represent anonymity in some way when it moved into real life. I think that the Guy Fawkes mask was one of the most natural things to happen. It is the idea that none of us are as cruel as all of us. You have this massive crowd of people who are anonymous that is going to fight against a bigger thing and win. Even after watching the video, it's like, yeah, this is great, but who's actually gonna do it? Who's gonna, who's gonna step up? Are people actually gonna get out of their house? Like, the, the, and I guess we were really affected by the stereotype of, of that whole community that being internet nerds, that too, too afraid to leave their mom's basements. No one thought they were going to come out. This is me on the way there. I haven't slept. I'm pretty fucking tired. And I remember going to the park that day, and it's really fucking early in the morning, which I thought was a bad idea. Um, and I'm, I'm smoking a cigarette and I'm looking around like, where the fuck is everybody? There's like, there's nobody here. So here I am. Sitting in Brian's park. Waiting for the other announcer to show up. 
I remember thinking like, oh fuck, like, am I gonna be the only one in the park? Am I gonna walk to Scientology with fucking six or seven people? Which totally defeats the entire purpose of this because now they could single me out, you know? Then I, I get up and I start walking around and I see there's a lot of green balloons over there for some reason on the other side of the park. There was like fucking 200 people. There was Guy Fox masks everywhere. And I'm like, holy shit, this is huge. There's a, a fucking lot of us. That's pretty good. I had no idea how many arms there were until we started moving. And it just fucking got bigger. I remember walking through Times Square and Everybody in Times Square was in a knot. Like, and you know, this is like a fucking thousand person per like fucking minute for traffic area. And everywhere I'm looking, I'm seeing fucking anonymous. It, it was fucking wild. It was really wild. We start getting numbers in. And Sydney. We're thinking that it's going to be 50 people. And before 10 a.m., before even time, there's already 50 people there. And there's still streams of people walking down the streets. A couple hours into it, you know, because I think I've been until one in the morning, you know, you're looking at Sydney as, uh, wow, there's 250 people in Sydney. The cops are estimating higher than that uh, for their reports. What, what just happened? Adelaide, Perth, and Melbourne happened. And, you know, over 200 of each of them. And you, we, we nearly broke a thousand leaving Australia. Now, the next protest was Tel Aviv, which had actually gotten its first psychology building right before this. There were Palestinians and Israelis at this protest, both holding their flags. And at one point, they actually switched flags and held up each other's flags and whatnot. It was awesome to see. I call our guy in London, uh, Britain on, and I say, hey, uh, what's going on there? And he's like, did you just get out of bed? I said, yeah, I need to turn on the computer. I just figured I'd call you. And he said, we've got 600 people, and the cops are really, really mad at me. All the major cities were having hundreds of people come out. Massive. Clearwater had like 300 people. I don't think anyone beat out of LA. I think LA had over a thousand people. We are the thing that happened was something completely different and hundreds and hundreds of people from every city just swarmed the streets. It was kind of overwhelming, a little even scary, but scary in a good way. Soon, you know, we're at around the 10,000 mark, you know, and we were joking the whole time, over 9,000, you know, one of those memes. It was too surreal. It was not believable. We go by one day. We are anonymous. It was very empowering, especially after people saw thousands of people showing up. This was it. We owned the world at that point. We all met each other. The idea of an anonymous, you're fucking alone until you get to 4chan, you know, and then these people all think like you, you know? Then all of a sudden, you're not alone. Um, you are with fucking 500 others, you know, but they all know the same jokes as you. Uh, okay, at this point, I just want to hold you there. You just watched about half of the documentary, and I guess at this point you know some background about the group Anonymous and what they did and why they became famous, all right? And uh, you know that in Hong Kong they, they hit some targets a uh, couple couple weeks ago, all right? And has been doing that since. All right, information security and privacy. What are they doing? Do you believe that they're doing the right thing, or do you believe that they are not? that is expected. Who's, who's leading the, the movement? Looks like there's no absolute leadership. There's no absolute leadership to characteristic of them. A group of people with a light mind do something, all right? So I, I would say that it's very good uh, for you to take a good look at the documentary. There's still a lot more documentary next to it if you want to study the movement there. And you can write something and match it with your side notes in your fair learning contract. And you can also add it to your learning report. Now let me go back to the discussion forum to see how many of you have already signed up. All right, one, that's very good. And uh, 
Do we have still one more team five? All right, so are you ready team five? You want to come down here to do some sharing? And we still welcome other teams to sign up here and then you can earn your score. Okay, I'll pass the time to team five and then uh, we can want the team base sharing up to 11.15, all right? So, we have excellent microphone today, all right? Maybe I could give you one microphone and then you can two microphones talking to one another. my computer you can just simply lock out and lock in with your user ID. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Winnie. And our second meeting uh, is on last Friday. And first, uh, we uh, decided to figure out the new also. And Helia and Brian will have two topics about uh, CIOs that are zero two and, and friends and I is uh, zero one. And uh, the topics of our proposed proposal is uh, what uh, computer crimes, and we come up uh, three questions uh, for this topic, and we find out a uh, thirteen website website with, uh, for this topic, and finally we find out a uh, five suitable references, and figure out the proposal uh, for format, and the next meeting is on. Um, uh, this Friday, and let me show our proposal. Uh, this is our proposal. Our topic is what are computer crimes, and there are three questions uh, for this uh, proposal. Uh, uh, question one is what are computer crimes? Uh, question two, what's caused Cross the computer crimes are free is what can we do with information security and privacy while facing computer crimes? And there are four references for this topic. And and the reason, uh, okay, that's all. Thank you, Winnie. Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm Ryan, and according to our, uh, according to our last meeting, we have decided to produce a new proposal. Okay, let me show our, uh, let me show our proposal. Just then, let me go down. Sorry. My proposal is talking about what is uh, 
what is the issue about Hacker and Quaker? <coughs> well, why I chose this topic here is a very interesting reason. Because uh, I have played a game called Watchport. It's a very interesting game and talking about the uh, story about the uh, Hacker and Quaker. So I very interested the information about Hacker and Quaker. So I chose this topic for our proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. I'm going. I'm going to to tell about my present proposal. It's my proposal topic is uh, voice information technology and 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 what is importance of information technology. And and the second one is the uh, what is the relationship with hacking and the ethic. Yes. And. And the reason why I write it, I choose this this topic is, and I I think I think we should learn we should learn the basic knowledge first, and we can we can know about the information technology, and then we can learn the further 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 knowledge to to do some and high level things. I think I think that is all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Thank you very much, Team 5. Thank you very much for your excellent briefing. Uh, may I invo invite other teams? Um, any other team who would like to share? Okay, now, if no, then I'm going to make a magic number. Okay, <laughs> let's do a magic number to see. Uh, we, we are able to accommodate four teams, so now we just have this one.
this is collectively for the number you get, we work out who's the next team, all right? Attendance for today. Helia, yes. Claudia, not yet. Ada, Ada, thank you. Andy, Andy, not yet today. Brian Bond, thank you. And then a Je uh, Jenny, 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 you, thank you. Uh, Jackie Wong, Jackie, not yet today. White Palm, thank you. Sea uh, Horn, thank you. Uh, Manfo, not here. Bitrets, thank you. Uh, Fish, thank you. Uh, Angela, thank you. Eureka, thank you. Vivian, Vivian, not here. Okay, Vivian is not here. Uh, Ruby, thank you. C. Thank you. Elisa, thank you. Lokka, thank you. And then Stephen, thank you. Terrence, not here today. Okay. Oh, Terrence is in a, in a particular game. He's excused. Winnie Hearn, thank you. Uh, and then Tom, thank you. Dixon, thank you. Winnie Ho, Winnie Ho. There, right? Gideon, thank you. Friend, yes. And then Michelle, thank you. Andy, thank you. Cindy, thank you. Neon, Neon, not here, okay. And then Ryan Lamb, you see it. Lester, thank you. Kelvin, thank you. Uh, Baca. Thank you. Jessica. Thank you. Zikin. Uh, thank you. Tanyu. Uh, thank you. All right. Uh, Iris over there. Thank you. Any person whose name is not being called. All right. So may I invite team number one now to come here to give us their show. All right. Now we have team one, all right? Please use the microphone, yeah. Hello. Turn it on, yeah. Uh, uh, we are team one, uh, I'm Cindy, and Try to get the basic idea through the journal. Uh, 
and encryption can help defend the computer crimes. And we will try to find the link between them, just like how to do the encryption and how to protect our information through computer crimes by encrypting. Okay. And in this following week, we will have a think tank on Wednesday in library. On Wednesday, our team is will share the general. Okay. Thank you. And I hope you have already found. Thank you very much. Your two signals to match up with your encryptions as the topic. Now, may I ask, is there any more team who would like to share? Out of the other 10 teams, okay? We have two teams share now, and we would like to have two more teams to share. Even with the five minutes left. Okay, anyway, if you don't have any particular inclinations to share, let me remind you, that it's very important that you come back to work on your wiki for your teamwork, okay? We have our three weeks wiki set up, week number eight, number nine, and number 10, using the same link. And since we have extended the learning contract number three by one more week, so you will also have the same link to the wikis at the team discussion forum next week, okay? So, um, may I just remind you, it's very important, just like my teacher's message today have remind you, that your work here in the team wiki, it's very important to demonstrate how mature your team has been putting together your learning since the first learning contract, your OIA representing your inquiry-based learning, your timeline, your meeting minutes, your goal setting, your work plans, your revisions, or your self-regulated learning together with the problem-based learning that you need to select a common proposal which is good enough to demonstrate that the whole team is able to encompass the two selected silos that you decided to work on in this first learning contract. So whatever you do, when we come to your team wiki, there's got to be enough information to meet anyone to know which two signals of this course have you chosen, what is the details of your problem proposal, and you come up with the match the signal, and what are the work assigned for individual peers and for individual member, and what are the artifacts produced, okay? And remember, you need to produce a PowerPoint, and you also need to produce a digital story based on the PowerPoint. Now, although, in the first learning contract, the digital story itself will not give you a lot of score. That means even though you don't do it, you will not lose a lot of points. But there's a very good chance for you to learn how to use the digital story because when you move out of the first learning contract into your learning portfolio stage, each one of you will definitely have to do digital stories to represent your work and accomplishment. So it will be very important that you learn as a member of your team how to do the digital story, the voice over PowerPoint here. And remember, if you need to know something more about the software that you can use to do this digital story, you can either use the PowerPoint that comes with 2010 versions, or you go back to the week number eight. Here in week number eight, you take a look at very carefully this is the software I highly recommend you to download in your computer and use it to record your digital story. You will have 30 days free of charge for the software and will be good enough for you to do it in this semester, okay? So, all right, having said that, uh, we still have five more minutes, or we can add it to 10 minutes. Let's do something like this. Okay, now if we add 12 to 18 to 22 to 33 to 36 and to 46, what's the sum? Can you try and add them? 12 to 18 is 30. 
So we'll reserve as not for you on Thursday. Okay? Thank you very much. So make sure you sign up here also, all right? So that we do not need to um, forget you. All right, I think what I need to do is, having given you this reminder, I would like to bring you back to the individual topics. Remember, um, because we reserve the time for the PBL class format, we will not be able to walk you through the individual topic that I have already prepared for you here. But if you have watched a number of these videos, I think it will be very good for you to do something on refractive writing on individual video for your learning portfolio. Because many of those topics can actually fulfill the cycles of the course. After you have watched it, after you have written something about this, after you have shared it with your learning partner or teammates, it will be good for you to write that to refract it wrong. And uh, I'm about to tell you what you need to do in your learning portfolio next week, okay, study next week. Uh, but I can give you some hints, just two minutes. In the learning portfolio, each student is going to do something individually based on the work done in a past free learning contract. And also, based on four possible side notes, you would like to select out of the six side notes in this course. Now remember, all together we have six side notes in this course. And uh, in your second learning contract, you did two. And in your third learning contract, you did two. So basically, each one of you should have gone through four side notes. Now in a learning portfolio, each one of you is free to choose four side notes for the six side notes of this semester. Now for each side note you choose, you need to determine a number of artifacts you can provide to demonstrate that you as an individual student is able to do what is expected in the side note. So these could include, well, a journal of the topic. This could include a very sensible pair of team-based discussions on the topic. These could include a formal report you could write for the topic. These could also include a personal refractive plot on the topic. So basically very similar to what you have done. Okay? So that means you can pull together what you have done in the first learning contract, second learning contract, and third learning contract, and do an improvement version of your work. And you can render for each side note a number of this artifact. And I highly recommend you, and this is something you need to do, um, you can produce one individual digital story for each side note you produce, uh, you select. And the digital story should not be more than 10 minutes, okay? And it should carry with it a PowerPoint which should not more than 10 slides. So that will be a very good set of artifact for each side note you choose. And remember, you have about five weeks time to produce the artifact for all side that you choose. And that is a very important part of this course. It's how you can extract your learning artifacts and polish them and use it as the basis to demonstrate you have accomplished four out of six important course intended learning outcomes of this course. And you have all the freedom to choose, all right? So very important. And I'm going to tell you more about the story next week. So that's it for today. Now it's 11.15 to 16. 
I'm going to see you back here on first day, expecting more teams who are willing to share. Do not lose a chance to earn your in-class participation score. 20%, all right? That's the easiest way for you to earn that as the basis of the work. Thank you very much for sharing. That's it for today's class CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. Until this first day, stay in tune.